<laughs> All right. Hello, testing. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. All right. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the press conference. We are joined by Boaster and Leo from Fanatic. We'll start with a pre-submitted question first. This question goes to either Boaster or Leo. After winning two trophies back-to-back -back and then getting eliminated in champions by Loud and then not qualifying for Madrid after losing 2-0 to Carmine Corp, how was your mental after it? Did you feel like you disappointed the fans rooting for you? And how did you come back from it? Is that maybe? No. Um, yeah, I, I'd say after champs, I wasn't too sad. It, it, it is what it is. I knew what what went wrong. Um, and then I'd say when it came to the Carmine Corp game, I was, uh, yeah, uh, very, yeah, very sad uh i'd say for the first two days after it i was yeah giga sad i'd say um i think but then after that i was just like come on you gotta you gotta you gotta get to work you gotta grind if you want to make it to shanghai because actually to be to be to be fair the tournament i wanted to make it to this year was shanghai i didn't really I jokingly said, it doesn't matter if we don't make Madrid. But when obviously we didn't make Madrid, I was quite sad. However, like, Shanghai was the goal for me. And now we're here. I'm, yeah, Hung Gao Xin. Like, very happy. Uh, and I'm chilling. Uh, I mean, for me, yeah, it was very, very disappointing to not make uh, Madrid. But uh, also felt like we didn't really have a chance to warm up. Like, we played one game. Uh, I guess by that we were standing. And then it was like, we're playing the most informed team during the time. Uh, so, I mean, obviously disappointing, but it wasn't like... Uh, we didn't get a chance to like warm up. Uh, so, I mean, stage two, it was just... Uh, for stage one now, it's just getting back to form. Uh, feeling like we warmed up. So, and we eventually played them again. We were warmed up this time. Uh, we won in the qualification game. So, it was just a slow start to the year. And we feel like we're, we're ready now to play, play any team. Thank you. Next question goes to Boaster. Uh, what is your favorite part about being the team's IGL? And how do you guys keep such a rock solid mental when you're down? Uh, my favorite part about being the IGL is uh, everyone listens to me, <laughs> except out of the game. Uh, out of the game, they ignore me or they tell me to shut up. Uh, however, in the game, uh, yeah, I, I have some. Uh, some control over how we behave and how we uh in scrims and stuff how we act uh and i think it's quite a powerful thing if you can have uh, an igl who uh can have fun but also is quite serious um because it sets the mood for the whole day so that's the best thing about igl is i can control i can control the day depending on if i want to be a moody ass sass, sassy lad uh then i can be quite mean but generally that never goes well so i'm i'm 10 i tend to be trying to be positive now uh and it seems to have worked like the two weeks before the playoffs um we had a talk and like i needed to be more positive because i was obviously stressing out about us losing to footballists and stuff and then losing to navi um but yeah ever since i've been more positive in scrims like the work ethic and the atmosphere has been a lot more enjoyable and yeah we seem to be getting a lot better now so yeah the igl does the most i wouldn't say the most work because it varies on igls but he does the most work out of the out of the solo queue and i quite enjoy it thank you we'll now move to remote media questions first question from pedro hey guys uh good to see you guys back in masters after a good while uh good to see you guys now feeling better looking better uh and speaking of better i want to direct this question to leo of course you know you didn't feel well uh back in the emba finals and i just want to have an update on, on how you're feeling you know are, do you feel you're back at 100 percent? and also on top of that you know what kind of well if you want to answer if not i understand then uh what kind of made you not feel well yeah i mean going back to the playoffs i mean was this i had the uh, covid right before playoffs or like some kind of sickness pretty sure it was covid uh, I was probably sick like two weeks before the playoffs for the whole that. Then the first day, I guess, liquid, I started feeling better. Felt better the whole way. But obviously playing playing five days in a row, you feel very fatigued. And it's like the recovery is not good because obviously 
it's like we meet at 12 and then they finish like 10 hours later and then to end, end the tournament with two best of fives it's just yeah super fatiguing and i mean i guess my body just need a rest i mean now probably not 100 percent yet uh due to traveling and stuff um uh, we're not playing for another what is 10 days so i mean should be should be fine until then Thank you. Next question from Elizabeth to Score Esports. Hi. Um, there's my questions for Boaster. Uh, Boaster, I was uh, watching uh, your podcast with your partner, Yunsu, and uh, talking about the uh, uh, kind of just the trolling, to put it very, very kindly, but just genuine hateful toxicity that you received at uh, about missing Madrid. You talk about having a great support system. She talks about the belief and just having that support system. Can you go a little more in depth for me about what that support system was? Um, I think it's like uh, the support system. It's just essentially having someone to talk to, like whether it's your family or your friends or your teammates or your loved ones. Um, I think just having that support system and being able to uh escape from the the gaming esports world and be able to just talk about other things or uh having a little i guess a reality check like hey like it can it can, it could be worse you could not be a player you could be uh still working in a supermarket or something I'm not saying that anyone working in supermarkets <laughs> not having a good time but uh, good day, good day. for me i didn't enjoy it uh when i was like 17 16 so um yeah, I, th I think it's, it was mainly that. And also as a player, like, especially for myself being quite personality driven, I like obviously reading comments and being involved with the community and, and seeing a lot of positive stuff. And then obviously it was a, it was a big switch up to seeing a lot of more negative stuff. And uh, a lot of it was focused towards, uh, uh, potentially me or like s someone that you know they say stuff they don't really know uh, and they don't have too much insight about and it's quite frustrating but you don't really care if you see it one off or whatnot you just go oh this person I roll uh, but if you see it constantly your brain starts to kind of like in a weird way hunt for it as in like you just look for negativity online and as soon as you see it it's like in your head it triggers something and you're just like i knew it see someone would say something like that and then it, for some reason it doesn't ruin your day it just it just i don't know there's something in your brain or heart that just kind of like um, gets triggered by it which is why like we're told not to really look at social media but you just can't really help it like we get addicted to video games like we're going to be addicted to other stuff and unfortunately one of it is part of our job kind of so yeah um i'd say it's, a, it's an interesting one it's definitely one for psychology but we'll see <laughs> just really quick follow-up would you say that you i hate this word but like no i don't hate it but i think it's the wrong uh, uh application have, have you healed from that toxicity and trolling or again like I, leo's laughing i know it's a silly word but um, but or is it do you think there's still work to be done on your uh, mental regarding what happened after not qualifying for madrid Honestly, for me, um, it was it was really difficult after not qualifying for Madrid because then you see everyone else going off to Madrid and you're like, you feel like you're missing out and stuff. And then when it came to me finally qualifying for Shanghai, it felt like a lot of pressure and stress was released off of me. And then even in the playoffs, like I even started to play better once we had qualified. And I think it's because I finally could enjoy the game again, knowing that I'm going to the place where I wanted to go to this year. And then I was in starting to enjoy it, have more fun. And then I was seeing comments like people saying like, I looked like I was having more fun instead of like, Boaster looks like he's going to die on stage kind of thing. Uh, even though it was, yeah, I was stressing out a bit, but because we, we, we were losing like, and I didn't understand why we were losing at the time. So yeah, I'd say, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily I'm healed. I didn't figure out a way, a secret cure as to why <laughs> I suddenly feel good. I think it was simply, I qualified for Shanghai. We qualified for Shanghai. And I just felt like it doesn't matter what people say now because I finally get to uh, enjoy uh, the the reason why I, I've become a pro is to go to these big international events and compete. Um, and yeah, and meet the fans and stuff. So I'm I'm just super looking forward to it. And you know, Yinsu was saying to me when I 
sent her a picture of me on in our hotel looking at the breakfast buffet and she was saying like these are the times where you have to think back to when you were stressing out in week two like you got to enjoy it now and save you and then remember this and then why you do it and so that's kind of what i'm doing while i was having some eggs benedict delicious uh, but speaking on behalf of the valorant community we are so happy to see you in shanghai and you do not deserve any of what you were given and we are so happy to see you be thriving thank you very much I'm like that. I'm healed. What the fuck? Oh! <laughs> Thank you. We'll now take some questions from on site media. I told you. Hi, Oster. Nice to see you again here in Shanghai. Last year, you told me that you were looking forward to a uh, variant event in China. Now you are finally here. How is your experience so far? Uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm going to say it's very nice. Like, uh, 很好, uh, 但是我没有, uh, 时间, uh, uh, 探索, Shanghai, uh, 很多练习, 练习, 练习, like so much practice. I didn't have time to explore Shanghai. Um, and I do want to go to Heidi Lao. I do want to, uh, uh, go and explore some of the like the main points of it and stuff but right now practice comes first but i'm super happy to be here and yeah honestly well i can't say that actually for letting me be mad i was like it's much better than germany i'll tell you that for sure so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really nice yeah thank you 啊，这个问题想要问到的是Leo，因为之前采访的时候，Boaster说你真的非常想要赢。那以一号种子来到上海大师赛，你感受是什么样的？So uh, actually, Boaster mentioned that when he got an interview with Insu, and he said you really want to win. So how does it feel to be in Shanghai as the first seed? Uh, how does it feel? I mean, uh, honestly, not really feeling much right now. I uh, it's obviously. We haven't really started practicing much. Uh, you know, it's it's a long many days until we start playing. Uh, so I mean, eventually I'm gonna get more hyped up to play. Uh, but honestly, just uh, yeah, I mean, guess when the tournament starts, I'm gonna start feeling that uh, excitement to play again. Uh, cause it's not really there right now. Uh, but you know, we we look forward to playing, and it's uh, yeah, can't wait to play. 那来上海之后有没有尝试一些比较 特殊的上海的或者说中国的特色餐品呢? So have you ever tried some special dishes in Shanghai? No, uh, not really. Yeah, we had one. It was like uh, uh, Hunan, Hunan, Hunan Thai. Hunan yeah, Thai. Hunan yeah. dishes. My yeah, God. it was a little restaurant. I had a uh, tomato and egg, mian tiao, and he had, uh, even though people were telling us to stay away from the braised pork, because the Fnatic League of Legends team didn't win eating the braised pork. He did have it on that day, I think. So, uh, yeah. Now, Bolster, do you have any words to Chinese fans? Uh, 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 I can't remember the word for support. It's like, uh, what's the word for support? Uh, thank you for your support. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, 大家, uh, uh, 支持. 支持. Yeah, uh, 我很, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. 我, 我, 我不哭了, 我, anymore. I'm, I'm chilling. Smile. 我休息, 休息, yeah, they... Thank you. We'll take a few more questions from remote media. Uh, Nerditude? Thank you so much. Um, my question is for Bowser. Despite the inconsistency in their performance during the regular season, Fnatic managed to secure the first place in the MIA region. How do you evaluate, evaluate the team's performance heading into the Shanghai Master? Uh, our team or the other teams? The, no, the Fnatic team. Um, yeah, I think um, ever since we've started uh, changing the way we practice in terms of more positive stuff it's been uphill from there and then even we we had a nice little well despite leo's uh health uh we had a nice grind it was a five-day grind and it really helped us mm. uh, iron out and kind of we ended up kind of playing a bit more 
feeling of the map, you know, playing the situations, as Leo likes to say. We've got to read the situations. And we were we were adapting to what the enemies were doing to us without actually having it almost like preset. So I think we were really coming into our form, e even in the finals against Heretics, and um, we made the good bounce back as well. And I think it's because we don't really know what our best map is. We just know that we're good at six. So uh, it doesn't matter what enemies pick, we're ready for those six. So uh, we could lose our pick and it doesn't matter because we could win their pick. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident and we've got uh, a few days now to really uh, get even more stuff and really refine our mistakes in those games. Uh, we've got a lot of odds to watch back and stuff and I'm just happy, you know, we happy we have the extra time, but also just happy to be here. Thank you so much and good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Next question from Ichiman. Hi guys. Well, wait, wait, can she uh can she be louder? The she she's, she's uh, honestly I, I don't hear her. Is it better? Hold on, we can hire ourselves up for this one, I guess. Okay, try now. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't. We, yeah, you're really, really quiet. Oh, internet delay as well. Yeah. I'm okay, sorry. we're very sorry about that. Yeah. This one. That one's me. All so right. Next question from B Valorant. Um, hi, uh, this question is for both players, and just as Kang Kang said, he really want to compete with you guys, then uh, what do you want to say to him in response, and uh, how's your feeling about him? I mean, I do think uh, EDGs, I have a feeling they're going to be good in this tournament, obviously they're in home crowd, but uh, they've been to many tournaments now, so... And they're a good team. We, pr we practice them in with champs, champs a few times, and like they're a strong team. Uh, and obviously with the home crowd, like I said, it's uh, resulting in playoffs also. So, I mean, uh, definitely uh, a contender, I feel like, for this this tournament. So, I mean, yeah, we'll be glad to play them. Always always fun to play new teams you haven't played before. So, I mean, we're, we're looking forward to it. And yeah, uh, what about Bosta? What do you want to say to them in response? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super looking. I'm looking forward to it. We've never actually played a Chinese team at any event. So it'd be fun to play, especially in in on their home ground. Billy, Billy, bro. Oh yeah, we did play Billy, Billy. Yeah, my bad. We actually have already played your best game in your career, bro. That was my best game, and I forgot about it. It was my life game. Put all my hard work into that game. Um, no, yeah, then never mind then. Um, but we've never played EDG. Then I'll say that. And so I know Kong Kong really wants to uh, to play us. And yeah, I see them in the in the lobby all the time, and we we have we talk and stuff. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to playing them too. There's no hard feelings here, just excitement. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. Yep. Thank you. Um, and Elizabeth, if you have Ichiman's question to read, that will be our final question. Um, I have not received it. Oh, wait. Oh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> I just showed up. I'm so sorry. Uh, they are uh, asking uh, one question for both of you. Which teams would you like to play against the most and the least? And for Boaster, are we going to see one of your uh, wallet dances? I guess walkout dances? Who do you want to play the most? Uh, I think, I mean, any team I haven't played before, so I guess uh, EDG, Refund, GMG, uh, Leviathan. G2, I mean, any any team I haven't played before is always most most exciting for me. Yeah, I think I'm the same with that one. Um, th those ones are the ones that I'd be I'd be down to play. I want a I want a good game, you know. I want it close, but us obviously winning. So that those ones are the most satisfying games when it's when it's a good fight and then you win, not when it's a good fight and you lose. But uh, yeah, so that one for me. And then as for walkout dancers, I'm currently in the gym every night uh doing 20 minutes of little light workout a couple of press ups and bits and bobs uh but i am learning some walkout dances uh, as we speak some of them are a bit hard though i'm trying to do 17 super at the moment and that one's quite a big one so uh we'll see how that goes on stage i don't know when i'm gonna be able to do that one don't <laughs> 
Great. Thank you very much, uh, Boaster and Leo. That was the final question. And we'll be back momentarily with the next one.